Insurance, this is Tony Cañas, and today I want to talk to you about the case for the exponential underwriter. This is based on research by Deloitte, and they did the research based on interviews with CEOs and other business uh, leaders of several insurance carriers. And I want to give a special thanks to Charlie King Dollar for bringing this to my, to my attention. If you're in insurance and you're not following Charlie, you are missing out. Follow him on LinkedIn and Twitter right now. What, what, what is causing the changes to, to the underwriting departments in, in basically every carrier? It's driven by the need for efficiency and evolve, evolving customer expectations. Underwriting has been a key focus area of digitalization and, and modernization. Most carriers have actively been upgrading their underwriting capabilities with more advanced technology and expanded data sources. Three trends stood out Deloitte expects will will fast track the case for underwriting modernization. First, underwriters are being challenged to move from hindsight, where underwriting decisions are evaluated after the fact, to foresight, where portfolios are actively monitored to understand the impact of risks added to to their book of business in real time. This this is super super interesting. So, so, so think about it. If you're on a personal alliance company and, or department, and and all of a sudden a whole bunch of new business starts coming in on in a, in a coastal area or in, in wildfire California. In, in, the, in a traditional underwriting department, it'd be a long time, it'd be, it'd be several months or more before you run the, the, next, the next concentration analysis, or I can't think of, of the correct word, and you realize that you have gotten too much business in the wrong part of, of, of the country and that, that you have gain too much exposure to some things and then you can make a change. So imagine if you had the tools to do that in real time. The moment that your underwriter or your your agent writes a home that gets counted in into the the analysis when it comes to, to, to concentration of, of risks. In the future, historical data alone may not be enough to underwrite an, an evolving set of risks, particularly in commercial lines. So that thing, think, think about that. Historically, underwriting has always been based on historical data. What if we get to that point where historical data is just not enough to underwrite risks that are changing too quickly? With rapid digitalization, the availability of alternative and, and, and predictive data is increasing, which makes risk selection increasingly competitive and facilitates more rapid adjustments to underwriting strategies. Underwriters will likely need to upgrade their tools and skill sets to thrive in this dynam dynamic and forward thinking world. There, there was a lot in, in the paragraph, so I really want to take a moment to, to, to talk about it. So as the world rap rapidly digitalizes, this is creating a lot of data that in the past was either not available or just not taken into account in the underwriting process. As some insurance carriers invest in, in their cap capabilities, be, become better at risk selection, that creates a competitive advantage that as they become more able to rapidly adjust their underwriting strategies, all of the other carriers are put at a disadvantage. So both the carrier and the underwriter will need to develop a whole new set of tools and a whole new set of skills to thrive in a, in a more dynamic forward thinking world. Second, underwriters are being asked to bring more science to the art of underwriting. The old uh, underwriting a, a risk on the back of a napkin was gone by the time I came around, at least in, in most lines. It's moving further away from that. Now, underwriting will always be partially judgment driven. So, so Deloitte agrees that, that underwriting, especially in the commercial lines, is not going anywhere. Those jobs are not getting automated away, but it's becoming more of a science. And, and it's remaining an art, but more, more of, of a science. Third, the nature of risk itself is changing. This is crucial, okay? Part of the reason that, that, that the underwriting, underwriting departments and tools need, need to change is because the nature of risk itself is changing. And we, we've seen it. For, uh, great examples that, that, that they list, mixed use vehicles, think Ubers, that blur the line between commercial and, and personal auto, auto insurance. We've been dealing, dealing with this for the last several years. What about workers' compensation and, and homeowners coverage where the boundaries are overlapping na nowadays because of, so, because of millions of people work, working from, ho from home? And then there's, there's the, the whole IoT or Internet of Things piece. Sensors are proliferating, generating huge volumes of new real-time data. So it brings me back to a time that where I was a middle market underwriter and I did a lot of manufacturing. And, and the way we, we would do them is we would send them questionnaires and we would send loss control people with experience in manufacturing to, to look at the risks and give me a report and give them advice on how to, how, to, how to improve their loss control. But if those factories had sensors all over, we, we were not equipped to, to digest that data. And the first carrier to become equipped to digest that data will have a huge advantage in, in those lines of business. Uh, achieving this transformation will not be easy or quick. It will require carriers to integrate new data and technology company-wide. It will also require a shift in organizational mindset and the skill set of, of the underwriters. So both the company and also the skill set of the underwriter will need to change. This is one of the reasons 
reasons. While I was in underwriting, I, I realized that the skill set of the future underwriter was going to be significantly more analytical than I'm strong in. I realized that, that I just wasn't a great match for the underwriter of, of the future, at least when it comes to the analytical skill set. And this is becoming more and more and more true. As machine learning, virtual reality, and other digital ad advances increasingly automate the underwriting function, more evolved underwriters can take advantage of technology and newly developed skill sets to become more valuable to both their clients and their and their employers. You'll have to learn new, new skills to be, to be a successful underwriter in the future, but you can start investing in that today. That, that is, that is the, the good news. Uh, Deloitte is not predicting that underwriting will get automated. It's just predicting that you'll have better data, better tools, and more of an ability to actually make decisions, or make better decisions. Leveraging real-time data, industry insights, and market sensing, sensing capabilities, they could be better equipped to not just help customers manage risk, but also to provide insight on how to avoid and prevent exposures, right? So, so the more that the customer gives us access to, to real-time data from, from, for example, IoT sensors, the more that we should be able to, to, to help them prevent losses, which is a win-win for both client and carrier. Underwriters should be able to focus on more complex challenges, crafting custom policies faster while improving their price setting accuracy and boosting customer satisfaction. The more that, that we take away the clerical parts of the job, the more that those are, auto, are outsourced or automated away, the more that underwriters can, can truly underwrite, can, can spend their time in the value-added activities of analyzing risk. Such transformations should be spearheaded by, by the emergence of, of the exponential underwriter. And here they finally define exponential underwriter. A multi-skilled professional who will take the use of alternative data and advanced technology to a whole new level while enhancing their role and becoming more strategic. So, so the whole idea is to take away the crap work, put you in a place where, where you can act more strategically in your underwriting desk. New data and technology is expected to drive underwriting transformation. Respondents cited greater use of automation, alternative data, artificial intelligence, or AI as the top three changes they need to make in the underwriting process. Together, th these fundamental elements will likely form the building blocks of any un underwriting modernization program. So, so if you're in a smaller carrier, you haven't started the, your modernization program, right there are the things that, that you need to look at to modernize your underwriting function. Increased automation, alternative data, data sources, and increased use of, of AI. Enabling new data sources and analysis. Traditionally, underwriters have, have used historical information to develop rules and guidelines to assess risks. However, if the relevance of historical data diminishes over time, it may not accurately predict future trends and exposures. This is petrifying. If, if, you, if you think about it. If the risk starts changing so fast that historical data no longer is a good predictor, how on earth will we underwrite, right? This could result in poor risk, risk selection, ambiguous coverage language, and inaccurate pricing. For example, relying on historical loss experience to write natural catastrophe risks used to be considered adequate, but it may be insufficient in the, in the future. Changing climate, urbanization, and increased asset concentration in climate-exposed areas could significantly alter risk patterns. Think about how, how huge that would be for all property insurance, insurance carriers. If climate change created losses so so quickly, the historical data we use is simply no longer pred predictive. What do we do? Well, they, they suggest augmenting climate change models with curated content to significantly broaden risk assessment considerations. So basically add all, all the extra data that you can and all the predictive analytics that you can. Utilizing technology to augment underwriters. Underwriters using legacy platforms are, are, are weighed down with several unproductive tasks, such as manually compiling information from disparate data sources, interfacing with multiple systems. Any underwriter will tell you that this is true. We spend way too much time in data entry and in non-value added activities because of the systems not being cutting edge. The result is lost productivity and higher costs. Solutions utilizing intelligent automation, including AI, can process repetitive tasks more ef efficiently while freeing up underwriters' time and supporting them to perform more value added tasks. Reimagining the underwriting value chain. And they look at how, how, at how to reimagine it at, at, at all the different parts of the value chain from, from the intake where submissions can be extracted using optical char character recognition, text analytics, natural, lang and na natural language processing. Incomplete data can be completed using image recognition, third party data and speech analysis. And also misrepresentations uh, and fraud attempts can be detected using, using behavioral analysis. Then the tree edging part. Modern systems can, can, can help you with prioritizations of submissions based on traits such as likelihood to buy or potential profitability using machine learning recommend, recommendation engine. So, so imagine that, that machine learning can, can get to the point where when a submission comes in, you get a score on how likely you are to, to write 
this submission and you can really choose. You can move away from from kind of rules of thumb of this agency tends to to bring in better day better submissions or this type of business we tend to be to to be more likely to be able, to be able to 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 underwrite successfully and, and sell the business. Have the computer give you a prediction based on, on, on history on how how likely you are to, to write any particular submission that comes in and how profitable it's likely to be. That would be amazing. Most underwriters are are, are unable to to look at everything that, that, that comes their way. How to triage it in an intelligent way would be fantastic. Then the risk assessment of the actual underwriting piece, piece of it, automated and, and assisted risk assessment and tailored products and coverage recommendations using intelligent rules engine and virtual assistance. Machine learning models using third party and sensor data. Think, think about, the system shows you how likely you are to be able to write, to, to, to write it, how likely you are on the on the business be, being profitable, and then it suggests the coverages that you should offer, and it applies all the models that need to be applied in the same system without having to go to Excel for a model, without having to go to a different system, system for a model. That would be fantastic. Pricing, tailored pricing using advanced predictive analytics, pricing scenario, scenario modeling, using machine learning, data visualization, decision support systems, processing, real-time binding, interim policy changes, renewals, and account management using these digital workflow tools to improve customer engagement. Finally, they look at the different roles that are likely to become necessary in this new exponential underwriting environment. They recognize that professionals are often concerned with, with their employers using emerging technologies as a way to replace them and resulting in fears about job security. And basically what, what, the, what the report says is, is that underwriters shouldn't be concerned with losing their jobs since with or without technology, they have the ultimate decision-making responsibility. Companies are very unlikely, especially in commercial lines, to full-on move decision making responsibility when it comes to million dollar decisions that like underwriters make every day to technology. They they want a human to, to have the last look and the last analysis and the last sign off, the last smell test. So yes, the, the role of underwriter is likely to change as a result of new data and technology. Traditional activities such as data collection, risk estimation, price quoting, policy policy issuance could take a back seat as automation takes on an, inc an increasing proportion of the workflow for routine and lower complexity risks. That does not mean that underwriters will have no role to play in the future of risk assessment, pricing, and new business decisions, quite the, con the contrary. As insurers move from hindsight to foresight, underwriters are likely to play an integral part in developing, implementing, running, and refining the advanced data models and automation, solu and, and automation solutions. They would have more time to focus on, on processing complex, high value cases that require experience and professional judgment and to monitor the overall profitability and strength of line of business portfolios. They will likely be tasked with interpreting communications and defending underwriting decisions, both fully automated and those augmented by AI. So this is super, super interesting. This is the black box problem, basically. If the AI have, plays a big part in the decision, you're still going to ha have to have a human to explain it to the agent and to the client and to multiple stakeholders. The, the underwriter is going to have to understand at least the basis of how those decisions are, are, are being made and be able to, to modify them based on the risk and based on, on their experience. They'll also work closely with leadership to ex execute on strategic initi initiatives. Personally, I think that, that if you're the type of underwriter that, that already has great analytical skills, investing a little more in, in, in those analytical skills, getting a, de a, a, a degree of designation in analytics would be very useful and enhancing your sales skills would also be very useful. And if you're the kind of underwriter who is really good at the relationship piece, anything you can do to improve your analytic skill set is going to help give you long tenure with, with the company and in the industry. They identified key areas in which underwriters should elevate their capabilities in the near future. From this, they created five personas to explain the new potential roles and how they could be cultivated. Each role has a, a, has a unique set set of responsibilities requiring specific skills. An underwriter could, could assume one or multiple personas per the action plan of individual insurers. The, the question of what exactly will exponential underwriters do? They came up with, with five personas. Number one, the technology trailblazer. Exponential underwriters would likely be in charge of managing the digital workflow. They would be the owners and supervisors of automation programs tweaking them regularly to customize performance and improve operational efficiency. They should collaborate directly with, with, with IT teams to refine underwriting platforms, automate rule sets, and test the, autom the automation performance. Here's something super interesting. With the emergence of no-code and local code development platforms such as Mendix and Uncork, Uncork, exponential underwriters will likely become more involved in the software development process itself 
since they don't have to code, further reducing time to market and cost. Very, very interesting. I have not seen no code or low code solutions using insurance yet. Number two, the data pioneer. With increased use of predictive data sets, such as electronic health records and pharmacy scans in life insurance and telematics and industrial sensors data in PNC or uh, IoT, underwriters should closely collaborate with, with data scientists to, to de design, develop, and implement analytic and predictive models to improve underwriting and pricing accuracy. So basically what Deloitte's calling for, the, the, the data analysts are not going to replace the underwriters. They're going to partner with the underwriters. Data pioneer underwriters will likely need to ma master how models select or price risks to, to ensure decisions are, are defensible to challenges from distributors, clients, and regulators. Again, you need a human to defend the decision. You need a human to finish making the decision with all the data that comes in and to be able to defend it in an, in an intelligent way that's not a black box. This knowledge could also be used to train frontline underwriter, underwriting peers on how to provide data-driven advice to clients. In addition, data pioneers could monitor model outputs and rule sets, identifying when to update rules to reflect the realities of market conditions and stay ahead of competition. Basically, human intuition will still be important in when to make changes to, to the models. Data pioneers should also be at the forefront of development in the insure tech and data, data provider space within underwriting. So basically, data pioneers will be in charge of keeping an eye, a close eye, in, in the insure tech space and data provider space to figure out what new data sources we can integrate into our models. Working with data scientists, they, they, they can scout for and experiment with new data sets that could help refine models in a cost-effective manner. Finally, as the human face for an increasingly automated underwriting function, they could also engage with regulators early in the development of models and their underlying data sources. This could create more transparency and alleviate any regulatory concerns. And there'll definitely be regulatory concerns as AI becomes more and more involved, especially because of the black box aspect of many AI systems. Number three, the deal maker. As insurers increasingly use predictive models to assess risk and, and price policies, underwriters will likely be called upon more often to partner with sales teams to explain the rationale be behind their decisions to agents and brokers as well as applicants. They will likely be called upon to help negotiate alternative terms and conditions to close sales rather than present the determinations as take it or leave it deals. So this is this is very interesting. So basically what Deloitte's saying is is all of the AI, all of the data, all all, all of the all of the the new tools that, that that will be developed will give you guidance. But ultimately it is not meant to, to for you it's not meant for you to take it to the broker and say this is it this is all we can do rather it's, it's meant for you to work together with the broker to find solutions that, that work and to find solutions that are that are win-win for for both sides using the the, the new tools that, that, that we'll have access to finally they, they could also help account managers identify alternative risk segments and develop go-to market strategies with producers in their role as deal makers. Exponential underwriters will also likely be tasked with cross and upselling activities. No surprise there. So, so your, your sell skills become ever more important. Number four, the portfolio optimizer. Underwriters could also take a lead role in developing a robust market sensing mechanism to provide real-time monitoring of the business environment. This market intelligence will, would help, will help them make rapid changes in overall risk portfolios in response to market trends, which should ultimately boost profitability. At the same time, market intelligence could be utilized to help develop modular products or enhance product sophistication, which could give companies a competitive advantage. Basically, what, it, what, it, what it's saying, as far as, I, as I'm able to understand, it is that while the system can, can run the numbers a lot faster, it takes the intuition of a human to keep an eye on what the market's doing and react quickly enough so that we're not just trailing the market. Number five, the risk detective. In, by the way, this is a fantastic, fantastic, fantastic job title for an underwriter, risk detective. In this role, underwriters would, would likely dedicate a significant portion of their time to assessing exposure probabilities at a case level in exceptional and complex situations and for high priority clients, risk assessment expertise, and exemplary communication skills. That leaves the complex work for the human risk assessment. So basically what, what it's saying is as more and more underwriting gets automated or, or gets AI enhanced, the really complex cases will, will need human eyes will need experienced hu human eyes. Those people are referred to in the paper as risk detectives. Risk detectives would also focus on, on developing and providing exposure foresight to clients by identifying signals that could predict a potential event that could be avoided or at least mit mitigated, right? So, so think of, of the system warns you that, that, some, that, that there's something weird with, with the data coming in from, 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 from the real-time sensors. You compare that to what you've seen in the past and you let the client know potential breakdown of some sort, potential loss of some sort. Finally, 
Exponential professionals could be called upon to shepherd new underwriters identified for, for, for this persona by sharing their, their, their tacit knowledge gained through experience. In fact, this knowledge exchange would have to be reimagined as vanilla cases get automated. It could be harder for new underwriters to acquire investigative skills on the job. Risk detectives may have to develop their own expertise and their own teams in different ways than they do today, such as getting involved with industry groups at a younger age and implementing innovative apprentice models. So basically, it calls for some level of reimagining the training. Is it, because if, if you think about it, if all your young underwriters, if all your new underwriters came in when the black box AI system was already in place and, and doing all, all of the simple policies, how will they ever learn? So what is the right, the right mix of exponential underwriter personas at, at a particular carrier? There's no right combination. This will vary company by company and the company should spend time identifying the unique, the unique unique mix of the above five personas that their underlying on that their underwriting workforce will likely require based on fact on the on the factors that drive their underwriting strategy going forward such as of the line of businesses they plan to be in the composition of, of their customers and the demand of distribution partners and overall market strategy the paper also looks at, at whether insurance recruiters are already looking at, at the skills needed in the future and it goes fairly in depth into it. The answer is no, for the most part, we are not. Have insurers actively uh, started recruiting professionals with the right skills to, to become exponential underwriters. Deloitte did some data lake analysis in, in, in their systems with a collection of more than 25,000 job descriptions from insurance comp companies globally. From the Deloitte Human Capital Data Lake from 2018 to, to August 2020, and they used text analysis to determine how likely some phrases were. What they found is, for the most part, we are not yet bringing in the right people to do this kind of, of work. There is a lot more to this paper, but there is a lot more to this paper. One of the things that you should probably know is that the, the biggest gap they identified in capabilities between the people that we are hiring today and the people that we're going to need uh, seems to be in the in, in emerging data skills. So you should focus on bringing in more underwriters with data capabilities and with analytics capabilities. Like I said, there is much, 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 much more to this paper that I recommend you, you, you dig into. Particularly like this part, winning the war for talent. As competition for talent intensifies, insurers should be very intentional about their strategies around attracting, retaining, and enabling exponential underwriters. In particular, as, under, as insurers try to fill the technology trailblazer and data pioneer roles, they will be competing with no, not only other insurers, but also with other industries for the best talent. Insurers should have a clear multidimensional human capital recruitment plan to secure this, these capabil capabilities. They should also look at non-traditional approaches such as alternative workforce models to ensure access to hard to find skills. Basically, if you think the talent war is hard today when you're competing mostly with other insurance companies, imagine how hard it'll be when you're competing with other industries that also need people with analytic skill sets. This is already starting. Then there's a section on how to map the underwriting, the, how, how to map the exponential underwriting journey, which basically, says that the, the journey has four stages. In stage one, you're becoming aware of the opportunities, but, but you lack a clear vision to drive the multifaceted improvement that the initiative will require. Most likely, you'll need to sift through, through data that is, that is across disparate systems to get the information that, that you need, and that's time consuming and it undermines the productivity and effectiveness of your underwriters. Companies in stage one likely lack the skills required in-house to launch your exponential journeys. Stage two, the insurer is developing some exponential capabilities with a high level plan in place, but the initiatives are largely implemented in silos. And they, they likely have an understanding of, of the exponential underwriting vision, but one, one which is not consistently understood, one which is not consistently understood or adopted company-wide, the improvement initiatives tend to be one-off and siloed, limiting the, the ability to, to scale up pilots or proof of concepts or proofs of concept. However, with the implementation of, of some enhanced core underwriting platforms, data strategy has improved. And this has augmented the capabilities and experience of underwriters to some extent. Stage three is the underwriter is scaling exponential in, uh, initiatives with a focus on the broader vision and receiving strong support from a highly trained and enabled underwriting staff. And finally, stage four, 
which is the insurer is transforming and becoming a risk management advisor for, for customers rather than just a steward of risk transfer mechanisms. In this stage, underwriters are fully skilled to fulfill their, their new exponential roles. They do not feel threatened by, by technology, rather they trust and embrace alternative data, more advanced predictive models, and pricing decisions produced by AI solutions. They can play an active role in explaining, justifying, and refining AI-driven decisions to create a virtuous cycle. Underwriters have reinvented themselves. They are providing risk prevention services and strategic in, in insights to clients, thereby monetizing the insurer's overall risk intelligence capabilities. Companies at this level would enjoy significant differentiation from the competition, and they may not need to compromise on pricing to win and retain business. In my opinion, 95% of carriers are somewhere bet between stage 0 0.5 and 1.5 at the very most I have not really seen anybody at stages two, three, or four. So, like I said, there is just a ton of ideas in this paper by Deloitte. I highly recommend that you print it out and highlight it. And I highly recommend that you start digging into it and that you start discussing it with your leadership and that you start getting prepared for the world that Deloitte predicts we're, we're moving into, which I think it makes a lot of sense. Thank you very much. Let me know what you think of the paper and my quick analysis of it. Thank you.